Hello, my name is Laura Saffold and I'd like to welcome you to JIT, Just-in-Time Manufacturing, and Introduction to Lean. I have worked in supervision, scheduling, and manufacturing operations for over 14 years. I've also worked with and led successful continuous improvement initiatives with teams composed of quality and mechanical engineers, plant management, and production associates. The agenda for this e-learning module is simply to define JIT, just-in-time philosophy, understand the elements and key components of JIT, identify the tools and benefits of JIT, define TQM, total quality management system, identify costs associated with poor quality, understand the people element of the JIT philosophy. So, what is JIT? JIT philosophy gained prominence in the 1970s through Tachi Ono at the Toyota Motor Company. The just-in-time JIT philosophy in the simplest form means getting the right quantity of goods at the right place and at the right time. The philosophy is based on removing waste from business processes to achieve a streamlined, highly efficient system that provides low-cost, high-quality products to support customer need. Waste is pretty much anything that does not add value. Inventory, wasted time through waiting, excess motion, scrap, rework, and return goods all add unnecessary costs to the business, and this of course affects the bottom line. JIT philosophy has been adopted by businesses in all industries to improve quality and reduce operating costs and of course improve customer focus. This Venn diagram illustrates the overlap of the three elements of JIT. The three elements of JIT are respect for people, JIT manufacturing, and total quality management. Okay, let's talk about inventory. Um, if you'll check out this image, you'll see that the water represents your inventory. And below the surface are rocks representing problems. A major aspect of JIT is its view of inventory. Inventory or safety stock hides these inefficient processes which add hidden costs to your business. The idea is to shrink your inventory gradually and reveal your problems. This is where a business must address the company culture to affect change. From my experience, many people are resistant to change. It takes a strong leadership team to motivate the change necessary to create more efficient processes. But in the long run, when the workforce embraces the changes, it leads to improved business performance, which translates into greater rewards for everyone involved. Okay, let's talk about the key components of JIT. The key components are uh, elimination of waste. Waste adds unnecessary cost to a business. Types of waste are time, energy, space, or any activity that does not add value to the product. Examples would be a production line waiting on parts, a material handler moving the same parts numerous times, and a person walking across the plant to find a container or tool. This is all wasted time, wasted motion. Another component is a broad view of operations. Everyone must have a broad view of operations as opposed to a narrow view because JIT is team and goal oriented. Everyone must see the big picture to understand that all employees are responsible for serving the customer. Simplicity. JIT encourages simple solutions. Oftentimes the simple solution is the most cost effective and understandable for the entire group. Complex solutions often cause confusion. Okay, Continuous improvement activities. Emphasize quality. It's called Kaizen by the Japanese. Organizations are never perfect and can always be improved. Visibility. Waste must become visible. When waste is hidden, it creates problems. JIT emphasizes clean, organized work areas with very little inventory. Flexibility. Being capable of producing a wide range of products through a flexible production system uh, to just accommodate changing customer demand. Okay, let's talk about the tools of JIT. JIT uses pull systems rather than push systems because push systems typically are where products are pushed through the system and stored in anticipation of demand, which of course may never come. Pull systems begin with customer demand and depend on quick setups and small lot productions as opposed to batch building or a lot of whip or work in the process. Leveling production is very important to maintain a smooth production flow and increase machine utilization. 
Disruptive changes in the production schedule contribute to inefficiency uh, and also creates waste and, of course, a lot of frustration in the process. Flexible resources are necessary as people are often called to perform tasks within the JIT system. The workforce must be cross-trained to move around as needed. General purpose equipment provides greater flexibility as opposed to specialty equipment. Cell manufacturing deals with the arrangement of work centers and equipment layout, as well as the facility layout. An efficient and popular layout is the uh, U-shape with a worker in the center with parts, tools, and machinery within reaching distance. TQM systems, quality systems, provide structure and control to processes. Documented processes, effective training programs, continuous improvement activities, and audits allow a system to be monitored, measured, and improved. The benefits of JIT always reach the bottom line because you have a reduction in inventory, improved quality, reduced space requirements, shorter lead times, lower production costs, increased productivity, increased machine utilization, and greater flexibility. I really can't stress the importance of quality systems enough. I have worked for companies that ran like well-oiled engines with smooth control processes, and I've worked for companies that uh, forgot the oil, didn't think the oil was necessary, or the oil was too expensive. Well, you get the picture. Uncontrolled processes are chaotic, and unfortunately management ends up becoming firefighters, fighting one fire or problem after another, and this of course causes waste in the system. How much does poor quality cost your business? How much do you think? When you look at the cost of poor quality, you can look at lost sales, lost customers, damaged reputation, decreased productivity, poor morale, uh, return goods, you can just keep naming off rework, scrap, warranty issues, uh, confusion, higher material cost, you can just keep going on and on. So what is your ROI or return on investment when you clear all these things up? The answer is of course different for every business. Respect for people. Businesses often forget their most important resource, their employees. There's a waste of experience, talent, and creativity when these human resources are ignored. People have good ideas. Good ideas are the foundation of continuous improvement activities. If the human element of JIT is not respected, unnecessary costs are the consequences. Take a few moments and look at this concept map. Um, it illustrates the consequences of disrespecting people as opposed to the benefits of respecting people. Um, I've been a very successful leader and found out very early that respecting people garner trust and cooperation. Respect and listen to the people that are closest to a process because they have the ideas that will improve that process. If you take a look at disrespect people on the map, um, you can see that leads to poor morale, which of course in turn leads to decreased productivity, safety issues, decreased quality, conflicts, increased absenteeism, high turnover, which of course leads to a dissatisfied customer and excessive training cost. And of course, uh, you know, in addition to that is extra operational costs. And, and you also have a stagnant uh, continuous improvement process where you have a lack of cooperation, a shallow idea pool, a uh, lack of collaboration, and conflict. People really uh, will develop a negative can't-do attitude and which accomplishes nothing is really a drain on the business. But on the other hand, if you respect people, you have a positive company culture which, uh, of course, leads to good quality, improved safety record, increased productivity, a satisfied customer, which leads to additional sales, more customers, and you have effective continuous improvement, um, which, you know, everybody works together, they collaborate, cooperate, and they, you know, solve problems together through teamwork, uh, through effective brainstorming and creative solutions. Now you should understand the basic characteristics of JIT. It is a philosophy that affects all aspects of an organization from administration to manufacturing. Companies like Toyota and Honda are good examples of how successful JIT can be to a business. Uh, JIT manufacturing, TQM, and respect for people are the foundation of the philosophy. Tools of JIT are pool systems, level production, flexible resources, cell manufacturing, and TQM systems. This concludes JIT Just in Time, Module 1, Intro to Lean.
I hope you have found this e-learning experience helpful and will continue on to Module 2 in the series. Please continue to the 10 question quiz and check your understanding.